Welcome, everybody. If you're watching on YouTube, you missed the very opening of the show where we talked briefly about the breaking news story in Toronto. But if you're watching on YouTube, you're not going to hear any of that because we've already moved on. And welcome to Full Auto. This is... Did we do a show last week? I don't remember. Did we? Didn't you? Did we? Did we? Did we, we did. did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. What did we do it on? I can't remember. Oh, it was on citizenship. Oh, it was right. on citizenship. What does it mean to be a citizen? Couldn't tell you. Because 40% of my wealth goes to the government. So that's more. <laughs> that's, that's what you citizen. think. That's what you yeah. think. Yeah. So it's 40%. less than. Right, let's say I'm, it may I'm be being more. optimistic. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. it's more. Yeah. So, you're... so am I a citizen or a subject? I'm feeling more and more like a subject these days. I would say, I'd say you're you're in the subject category. I I'd yeah. say most most of us, including me, we're in the subject category. It doesn't mean that I am a surrender monkey subject. It just means that, in, in point of fact, I recognize that I am in fact. Uh, a subject, but I'm a subject looking to unsubject myself peacefully, peacefully, mind you, peacefully. Right. Uh, well, cause and there's another the component. The other ways I don't think will work. Well, but there's also the other component that, you know, that we've talked about in passing and in private, um, where do you want to be a free person who's starving to death and whose children are dying? Or do you want to be subjugated and living in the lap of luxury well your answer was just tear it down from the inside out not tear it down i'm not tearing anything down i'm not i'm i'm rendering it obsolete i'm oh, having that's people showing up less and yes. less it's Correct. it's it's not tearing anything down it's just i'm going to stop using your services and you're going to have a hard and a hard, harder and harder time collecting the revenues and effectively enforcing your laws because more and more people are going to be able to just say no to you for various reasons. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. But let's let's get to our top story. Are you ready? Shoot. Are you oh. excited? Do you know what the top story is? I remember you sent me the notes and I read them. And oh, my gosh. What else? It's your freaking top story. It is? Yes. You're the one who picked this. I, I had a different show in mind. Wow. And you're like, dude. And you went with it? I went with it. What are you, stupid? I do it all the time. I'm a sucker. Sucker born every minute. In my case, I'm born Wait, literally can, every minute. Can you get can you get onto it? Yeah. US Marines preparing to replace five five six cartridge. That's the headline. Might be well, a little sensationalist, but uh a little I bit. went with it. They... <laughs> not so the... not that I'm up for doing clickbait, because that's not me. So it seems that those of us who have been saying for the longest time that going into battle with a 22 caliber firearm is just not good enough. It's 22 caliber at 3,000 feet per second. Let's yes. make sure we add that okay, part. So, so That's if a I'm significant going, part. Okay. So if I'm going into battle with that firearm... I've got a pretty good chance of surviving, okay? Um, and they it and that cartridge and that in that platform has tremendous advantages, tremendous. But what Americans learned in going house to house in Afghanistan and Iraq is that you can pop somebody with one of those two or three times. And they're not out of the fight. They're still shooting at your ass. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say though that uh, they're you're they're gonna kill them. Effective. They're, they're. I mean, for home defense, I'm sorry. I feel very, very adequate with. As a matter of fact, I think it's actually overkill for home defense in most situations. Right. Right. But, but in a battle uh, scenario, yeah, I might feel a little outgunned against the uh, against the three oh eights and the, what'd you say? Right. Against an AK, the, right? Uh, an AK, seven point right. six two by thirty nine just has more stopping power. They will both kill your ass, dead. I, just, I don't want to get shot by either. The it's AR, just, you'll bleed out, and right. the AK, you'll drop. 
correct. Well, you're so, more likely to drop. You could end up bleeding out from the AK, but you're more likely to, to drop with the AK. Right. So now the the Army and the Marines have tagged along with the this, Marines and they're looking are at— tagging along, right. Yeah. So instead of a 5.56, five, they're looking at something between 6 and 7 caliber. So and there's at... lots of good choices. Yeah. So. Now I had in in the image. I'll go back to it here so you guys can see it. I I picked that image. I don't know if you saw the show image. If it's a it's a you know because I'm not a sensationalist. So the title of the show is you're gonna need a bigger bullet. Hoorah! And it's a picture of a woman and she's like, and she's got she's looking at the uh, uh the five five six. And she's looking at the uh, the, the, the Creedmoor, the 6.5, whatever, Creedmoor. And, you know, you can read into that stuff. But but it's not necessarily that that caliber. I just went with it for visuals. But uh, they're looking at, uh, uh, like you said, they're looking at a wide range of, of calibers. But it does, right. it does say here, the as a solution, and this is from military.com, as a solution, the Army is experimenting with a plan to replace the M249 squad atomic weapon and M4 carbine with futuristic weapons that fire a 6.5 oh, case telescoped round or something that falls between a 5.56 and a 7.62 uh, uh, millimeter. And I'm assuming if they're 7.62, are they... Are they, are they going in the three nine or the five one or who knows? Look, my favorite cartridge of all times, one of my favorite cartridges of all times, is the seven millimeter O eight. It's just a very compact version of the three oh eight that shoots flatter. Transfers more energy downrange. It's just its ballistics are superior to the 308, and it would make a great cartridge. The problem is the case is so large that you're going to lose all of the benefits of the 556. So I think what they're looking for is something in the middle of this 308 and the 556, where they're not going to lose too much, too many, um, too much capacity, but gain a little in terms of firepower which is essentially what the 40 cal was designed to do in the handguns. But after a few years of using the 40 cal, now the feds have gotten wussy on us and gone back to the nine millimeter. So if the cartridge that they're going to try and field is going to be, is going to recoil more, is going to have fewer uh, rounds in the magazine, uh, is going to weigh more because a, a heavier cartridge is going to require a heavier gun. Um, they might field it for a couple of years, but are they going to stick with it or are they going to go back to the 556 eventually? And I have a screenshot here of the Wikipedia entry for the 762 by, or the, excuse me, the 7 millimeter 08. Uh, and it's a, it's a rifle cartridge that is almost a direct copy of a Wildcat cartridge developed around 1958 known as the 7 millimeter dash or slash 308. So some of the, uh, the specifics here let me see what it's got here oh come on where's the ballistics for this thing dude why don't you just list the ballistics in an easy place where i can see it velocity 2800 uh, feet per second and the energy 2400 foot pounds that's that's hurtful that's that's almost as fast as the 556 five, but it's Instead of five point five six millimeters, it's seven millimeters. So right. it's got yeah. it's, it's got, got a lot more of mass and it's almost as fast. It's right, more but mass it's, and it's almost as fast. Yeah, but, but the cartridge, the overall casing is so much larger. It's the size yes. of a three hundred eight. So good luck with that. Yeah. So oh. yeah, you're going to have issues with the carrying and stuff. But now they mentioned. Uh, uh, something interesting, and I think that we've uh, talked about this before, and that was the case telescoped round. We we've, we've talked about these, haven't we, before? We let have. This, let me bring and, this puppy up. And as of now, I mean, the French tried to develop a flechette back in the seventies and eighties, which was a caseless cartridge, um, where the the entire package that housed the that 
carried the flechette would explode and just there was nothing to extract which is great idea but making it work wasn't so great maybe it's ahead of its time well, but this is something similar. The, 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 it could be more developed. Uh, telescope rounds feature a bullet completely encased in a polymer shell like a shotgun with gunpowder surrounding the bullet in the shell. So it, they're, 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 uh, you could see the examples here. Traditional versus case telescoped animal. Uh, animal. <laughs> Ammo. Uh, you can't see the picture, but the studio audience can. You can see the example of a and now and see the interesting thing is 6.5 millimeter even 762 like it's shorter because it's all contained within the case right telescope and the case and the case doesn't have to be um uh, what's the word i'm looking for sloped yeah um, there's no well it's 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 a tube it's a correct. cylindrical tube so you can get more powder up and up to the very end of the cartridge. So, yeah. And, and you can easily reload them. I'm assuming that's another, I'm assuming. Am I wrong about that? I don't think they're reloadable. If the whole cartridge is going to go boom. Oh, whole cartridge little... goes down. So it's not like a shotgun shell, like they said. Like the shotgun well, shell, do you? It all depends on which of which prototype you're talking about. There's there are so many different kinds of prototypes for new ammunition design uh, of this kind that some of it the entire casing blows up with an electric spark. Others are still fired with a firing pin, um, and they're so, hybrids of both designs. So so Alex has a couple comments here and Ka Alex uh Pesterfield he's a he's a gun guy I know him I mean I know him on Facebook I I interact with him a lot and he's uh he's a he's a he's a really big gun guy uh so he knows this stuff but he's saying so he has to put this yes Alex I know I don't care about the military don't support it yeah 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 this isn't about the military it's it's interesting that the military is con con considering this switch i think it bears paying attention to uh, well and the and what the 556 was designed to do versus what the ak-47 was designed to do don't forget the ak-47 round was designed uh during world war ii and was fielded just at the very end of world war ii and after world war ii and it was designed to drop men in their tracks but not at 400 yards it was designed to drop men within 200 yards in their tracks the 556 and take them out of the fight the 556 was designed to wound people and to to cause havoc in the in the ranks where when the wounded were coming back two or three men had to be evacuating one wounded person the the and it was a that's the theory. I, I, I will say it's that's not, not a really a theory. theory, but I kind of think it's true. But yeah, it's it, it's among people that I know who are serious gun people, they've accepted that, uh, that the five, five, six was designed to wound people horribly so that a lot more people and resources were, were used to try to save the life of that individual versus now, the the 30 caliber cartridges or the 7.62s yeah, and of course now now because of you know medicine has advanced that they can they can get that person in and out pretty quickly they can get them recovered a lot quicker if unless they're you know debilitating illnesses illnesses but they're not going to keep them on the battlefield nearly as as long but alex makes a point here he says more than likely it'll it'll it will be, I'm assuming you meant it will be proprietary and a huge disaster. 545 is the best round made. Do you know this round? The 545 is the Soviets' answer to the 556, and it was a tactical change in, in what the Soviets had done. They essentially took a, a AK and necked it down to the 545, and he's right. In terms of ballistics, it outperforms the 556 in terms of accuracy it outperforms the 556 in in terms of so many things the 545 is one of the world's all-time like champions for warfare um he's absolutely right but it it also documents how the soviets moved away from the 7.62 uh 
and went to the 22 caliber for the same reasons, because they wanted to wound people and put, get them out of the fight and tie up people trying to save their buddies, dragging but, but, them but back now, to help. But now what, where most armies, I mean, what most armies of superpowers, they're not going to be on a regular basis confronting large battlefield situations. They're going to be dealing with limited skirmishes, urban warfare. What do you call that? The, right. Uh, and the urban warfare reality uh, smacked America in the face when guys would go into a building and pop somebody three or four times with a 556. Five, and these were mortal wounds. This guy was going to die from these wounds. But for the next half hour to an hour, he was still sending lead down range. So, he was still shooting at Americans as he was like moving around the building. He wasn't going to live, but in that time, he could still shoot back. That's a problem. So the and, reason – go ahead. And so that's one serious issue. The other serious issue is in Afghanistan. You have guys who have 100-year-old um, British guns in 303 – who are taking shots at Americans from hundreds of yards away and hitting them with these old Enfields, right? Right. And Americans turn around and start shooting back, and the 5.56 five, just doesn't have any energy to do anything at that range. Yeah, you you're, you're, yeah, you're definitely have a range disadvantage. Right. So now you have to get a sniper out there with a three oh eight or better to take that guy out with a bolt-action... 303 Enfield that's going to hold keep American heads down in a firefight that's nuts that's nuts so in Afghanistan they realize they need something closer to a 308 they need something that can reach out they don't want an inter intermediary intermediary intermediate intermediate intermediate, intermediate cartridge that's an assault rifle cartridge like the 5.56 five, or the 7.62 by 39 or the 545. They need a real battle rifle that has reach. Uh, hell, give these guys an M1 Garand that's car that you know shoots the 30 out six, and they're in much better shape to return fire against the guy who's shooting a 303. Right. <laughs> <laughs> From pre World War II, 303. So, wait, and are these... you saying that low tech can sometimes beat high tech? Well, hells yes. Ah. It's it's all about the mix, man. That's interesting. It's now, all about the mix. The, the reason that, that, well, I don't know why you wanted to cover it, but the reason that I was interested in covering this is. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that if the government's doing that, then it makes sense and you should pay attention. I'm just going to say if the government's doing it, pay attention. It might not make sense, in which case you can then continue about your life. But sometimes it does. So I'm looking at this and I'm seeing that I, I, I think the U.S. military situation is such that they want to drop them. They don't want to send people right. back. They want to drop them. And what they're telling you is... The five five six doesn't drop them where they stand. So, so if you're looking at you know the s the the proverbial shtf situation, I think this is something that bears paying attention to. Bears it considering. Does. Look, dude, if you got a five five six, and and there's some bad people coming your way, you're okay. You're not. You're, <laughs> You're not um, going to be undergunned. But if civil war breaks out? <laughs> Dude, if civil war breaks out and you've got a 5.56, five, you're in pretty good shape. The 5.56 five, has killed a lot of people. And it probably will continue to kill a lot of people. It, it's a very effective... 5.56 five, five, doesn't kill people. People kill people. Just wanted to add that. <laughs> Just in case some gun grabbers watching, you're like, see, so, even they admit it. No, so no, we're not admitting that. So it's an effective cartridge, but it doesn't. And and against the civilian mob, 
you're you're in good shape. Yeah, I... if you're if you're in the if you're in the foothills of Kandahar, or going room to room clearing rooms in yeah, well that uh, could happen in, Iraq. in a kind of a civil war situation. Okay, really? That that's what you're planning for? No, no, not at all. Okay. I'm just. I mean, it's a contingency so, to think about. I mean, you what you what, what do you do when you're looking at contingencies? You think about okay, what is the the realistic expectation that I may have to face this situation. And if it's the relatively low, then you put less time, money, resources into planning for it. And if it's higher, then you put more time, money, and resources. What are the chances Look, that I think that I'm going to be in a civil war situation in which I'm going to go house to house fighting for my life or I'll be out in the open plains dealing with somebody from far away with a with a with a with an Enfield pointed at me, probably low. So maybe this isn't a high priority, but still, no. it's something to so, talk about. It's something to consider. For certain, it's something to consider. Look, I think the the nine millimeter is a piece of shit cartridge. It really is. It's outdated. It's in my mind, it's as outdated as the forty five. Do I want to get shot with either of them? Hell no. Does that mean Wait, that somebody 45, armed with a gun? 45, one shot, one kill, man. Don't, don't. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. no. I used to have a 1911 before the boating accident. One shot, one kill. Okay. So does your does your magazine release work? Is that, yeah. Did you fix that? Yeah. Did you, oh, you fixed it. Okay, good. Yeah. So I don't want to get shot by a 9 mil or a 45 or for that, <laughs> for that reason, for that matter, a musket. I don't if, no no you if the musket hits you okay you it might not hit you but if it does yeah, you no, no, don't I'd rather hit. be hit by the nine millimeter oh, thank you by by a lot yeah <laughs> yeah get Please three don't, shots don't hit me three, with a fifty cal lead ball fifty yeah. like seven some of these were seventy what, what, whatever cal. Yeah, yeah right seventy cal fifty cal whatever yeah. big old so, meaty lead balls all gooey up in me. I don't want that. Nobody wants so, that. So the nine millimeter is subpar by a lot. The five five six is subpar by a lot compared to the three hundred eight or the thirty out six or so many other really good cartridges. I don't want to get shot by a nine millimeter or a five five six. They'll kill you dead. So instead of dying today, being shot by a nine mil, I might die a day or two later, but I'm still gonna die. So I'm good. I'm not interested in getting shot. And if you have a nine mil and that's what you are I good prefer with, not to get shot. Yeah, if you got a nine mil or a five five six, trust me, they'll get the job done. Is it? Are they the best cartridges to get the job done? No, absolutely not. They're not. So if the military is looking for something with a little more heft, it's something to take seriously. Yeah, take seriously. I, I mean, don't don't but don't mortgage invested. your house trying to to, yeah. to fix it out. If oh, oh got... Andrew, Andrew Golf, by the way, uh, Andrew, if I'm mispronouncing your last name, I think you already told me how to pronounce it before and I got it wrong before. Uh, he He's another uh, gun guy. Uh, I believe Andrew has also been in the military, he has some, some experience. So he's saying 5.56 five, Tumblr versus Penetrator. Tumblr wins. Yeah. Of yeah. course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And dude, yeah, you can get hollow point 5.56. Five, and two, two, three, which are devastating. So if you're invested and you got 10 semi-autos in five, five, six, and you have a couple of bolt actions chambered in the same thing, and the military decides to switch to something else, I don't recommend you getting rid of those. Dude, no, those no. guns will kill your adversary just fine. You're not the military breaching in doors looking for uh, Osama bin Laden. You're, you're defending your homestead. You're defending your home. You're defending your county, your city, your people. Very different story. Um, like well, I I'm said, right, I'm ready to move I, on. I'm not a big fan of the 5.56 or the 9mm. And yet I have a few of those. And I'm very confident that if I was in an oh shit situation, I could do just fine in protecting myself and my loved ones with with those platforms. So theoretically, it is possible that uh, I have 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 in the past pocket carried a nine millimeter and felt like 
all things being equal, the chances that I'll face a situation in which I'll need more than that is not very high. Dude, you're carrying a firearm for self-defense. You're not going into battle. Right. With it. Yeah, I'm not looking so, to take the offensive. I'm looking. Right. Honestly, you know, uh, in, in, uh, I, 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 I mean, there could be scenarios where I'd want to take the offensive, like if somebody took a loved one or something and I was going after to get them back. But, but by and large, man, to me, the firearm is there to, to blast and escape. Uh, if I can end the threat immediately, great. Other than that, blast and escape, man. I'm not trying right. to stick around and get in a firefight with anybody. No. Hey, not we're, at all. We're switching topics. Yeah, we are. And I'm experiencing a technical difficulty. I need what? to part for two seconds. What, what's your back. technical difficulty? Do you? My battery is dumping percentage points like every Okay, you go fix that. While, while you do that, yeah. okay, uh, while you do that. Can you entertain I'm... people with a song? No, I'm actually going to go. I'm going to go talk to them about the next story. And then when right, you come I'll back, right then back. you can give me your feels on it. All right. When he gets back, I will put that back up. He's left me high and dry, and that's okay because I don't have a problem talking. So this story that we have on the docket next is a big finance wages war on gun manufacturers in bid to disarm Americans. And... Andrew, I see your comment there. If you want to talk round benefits, I can go in depth. Yeah. Uh, but but end of the day, pistol, 10 millimeter hollow, the 300 blackout is the best rifle cartridge. I'm a big 10 millimeter fan myself, and uh, I it's, it's on my wish list. I don't have anything chambered in 10 millimeter right now, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, I definitely, I'm, I, I definitely want to. Oh, I think he's back already. Well, welcome back. That was quick. Did you fix the problem? Did you fix the problem? We'll soon see. We shall see. What did you do? Did you plug something in? Yeah, I plugged in a different charger. Plugging in is good. Uh, so yeah. the, the 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 comment that Andrew. Uh, made here. I, I I don't know if I totally agree with you about the 300 blackout as the best rifle cartridge. It's but, good, but uh, I I kind of agree with him with the 10 millimeter hollow point as 10 the millimeter. best as the best pistol cartridge. Are you there? Uh -oh. um, what was that for? You just lean back. Are you going to go to 40? Because you're a 40 guy, right? Look, the 10 millimeter. Is like it's a superior cartridge. It really is. If I'm going into battle, I want a 10 <laughs> mil. I like this comment. I got to interject this. Brett Jones, he says, I agree with this. 22 Derringer for all military and police only. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I like that. That's it. That's a great idea. By the way, Andrew, Ow. somebody somewhere down the road, Andrew, if you're interested, it'd be great to have you on the show. I think you'd like Andrew. Which Andrew? Andrew Golf. Andrew, if I'm mispronouncing your last name, sue me. But uh, but he's a very knowledgeable gun guy, and he's got so, some experience. We can bring him some sometime. We'll have to bring him on the show if you're interested, Aaron a Andrew. Anyway, go ahead. Ten millimeter, fantastic battle cartridge. Yeah, without without question. But it's not something I want to carry every day. I want to carry a forty or a three fifty seven Magnum because a three fifty seven Magnum gets you ten millimeter power, but I don't need like fifteen rounds of ten mil. You know, five rounds of three fifty seven will do what I need it to do. Um so, so I am so a big, big fan of the three fifty seven Magnum. I really oh, am. Oh, you have because there for a while it was forty. I mean, you always oh. loved the 10, but there for a while was the 40. The now you've kind of cal, rolled on to the, the 357. No, 40 cal is my go-to cartridge. I think the 40 cal is right in between a battle cartridge and a self-defense cartridge. It's it's a good cartridge overall. Um, and when I can carry 40, I carry 40. And when I can carry 357, I carry 357. And when I'm wearing a suit to an important event 
and all I can carry is this little nine, then I'll carry a nine. I'll try to adjust for what I can, but I prefer the 357 Magnum at this point. Um, and I've looked closely at the 10 mils, and they are fantastic. And my favorite thing about a 10 mil is you can use usually shoot 40 cal out of it. Most 10 mils, if you don't believe this, go on YouTube, go on the tubes of Ube, and look up 10, 40 cal shot out of 10 mil. And there's about a dozen guys who are doing it. And if I am not mistaken, guys who are shooting competitively, like Ipsic and uh, all of the other competitions, are shooting 40 cal out of the 10 mil because the 10 mils are generally such a beefy gun that when shooting 40 cal out of it, it's a very pleasant shooter. Let's get let's get to this story now. I, oh, I want to try and did get I, this story. Did I account. ramble on too long? No, no, oh. no. You were you were just fine. You went right about the, way, the, the right length there. And the 300 blackout. And now you've gone cartridge. too. Now you've gone too far. Great cartridge, but I think the six. The 6.5s and the 6.7s and all of those are better. Okay. Yeah. But it's nice that subsonic with the uh, suppressor, and that's a factor. If you're a baby with sensitive ears, you should Oh, my gosh. It's not about being a baby. It's about not being easily located. <laughs> okay. I want to see where I'm hiding. <laughs> Okay, whatever. I'm moving on. We're moving Please. on to uh, uh, big finance wages war on gun manufacturers and bid to disarm Americans. Yeah, I wrote that title. I did that. See, I wrote it the right way. Their title was Big Banks Target the Second Amendment. That's okay. And and whoever wrote that, this is Front Page Mag. They're a pretty conservative, right-leaning publication. That to them was shock and awe. And that ain't nearly enough. <laughs> Not the way I'm looking at it. No, no, no. They are, they are, they are waging war on gun manufacturers in a bid to disarm Americans, and they would like to disarm Americans by, by well, uh, preventing the next generation from getting access to guns, and then the next generation less access. So it's, it's, it's disarmament through natural attrition, is is the strategy here. So change the culture, of course. Well, what happened recently? Some now. I didn't particularly like this picture. I don't really like these. You know, the the father is uh, there holding his gun, and he's got the daughter. And it's prom season, so you're going to see a few of these things. And the father's standing between them, and he's holding. It looks like I can't. I couldn't tell. I thought it was uh, 1911, maybe that he was holding. Uh, looked like a 1911 trigger, but I couldn't tell fully the rest of the gun. But some baseball former former football player Jay, Jay Feely I think is who it is uh, so he has this picture where he's holding a gun and is like just just wishing my my daughter and her boyfriend to uh, have a good time at the prom you know you know it's like yeah uh, maybe raise your daughter up to like be able to you know figure stuff out and protect herself to a certain degree but but you know not go to the prom with a rapist or not go yeah maybe she could figure that out ahead of time and you don't need to pull yeah. out the gun but 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 also I looked at it and I thought well I mean if this guy's serious okay that's one thing he's probably being jokey about it <laughs> probably a jokey joke cuz it you know it kind of looked that way but because they're advancing this this frothing at the mouth anti-gun culture people are calling for this guy to be fired because he had a picture with a freaking gun that's the culture that they have created where yeah but there's a backlash to that now too you know well I, i'm there's... not sure yeah there is a backlash but i gotta tell you the way i see it the real the certainly the market power is is with the gun grabbers the 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 folks and you know it makes sense the the large we're kind of well this is related to this the 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 mega corporations they are married to the state they and the state are practically freaking one this is what do you want to call it fascism whatever you want to call it it's it's whatever you think about capitalism if you think that capitalism means free market they're not this isn't the free market these companies owe their existence and their protection from competition 
to protection from the state. So they have a vested interest in seeing to it that the interest of the state gets served. And so the people that own these companies that are making these decisions, they, they understand. Uh, you know, the, the memo has gone out. Hey, it's time. It's time for the push. Uh, I, I'm not saying this is the final push, but this is it's time for this significant push and it's time to keep it going. Let's see how much momentum we can keep going with this. If at some point they meet a roadblock, they'll back off again, bide their time, make another run. But so far, this run, this run is going on for a while now. Like, yeah, this, but it's artificial and it's and it's, it's already- not artificial. Let, let me let me read this article. Okay, so this is from frontpagemag.com. Now, I'm not saying that they're not going to experience some sort of backlash. They may end up backing down. I don't know. No, that's not the kind of backlash I'm talking about. But go ahead. Bank of America has warned that it will refuse to lend money to manufacturers of assault-style guns. It had previously announced it was edging away from the the coal business to fight global warning. Now, Citigroup, Citigroup's even worse. Citigroup... Uh, is uh, re- uh, basically telling its clients to impose their own gun control policies on their stores. They have to, in order for you to do business with Citibank, you must assure them that your store does a few things to impose gun control on the customers of your store, including not selling to uh, people under 21, not selling AR-15s and a number of other. So this is this is... This is state corporate America that is using their artificially and ill-gotten monopoly power on the marketplace to exact real costly consequences on businesses that are simply trying to sell tools of self-defense to people and don't go along with the the, the, the insane anti-gun, anti-liberty, anti progress agenda now what are you referring to you when you say backlash well i think there's look when you start preaching to people uh there's a certain element of the society that's going to look at you and say whatever you are i'm the opposite so when you have people who are not naturally predisposed to being pro or anti-gun who are being preached to they start feeling that they need to pick up a gun and figure out what this thing is about to understand why you're pushing this agenda so hard. And I've experienced this recently with people who have never touched a gun who said, you know, with all this hype, I, you know, I, I called a friend of mine who, who works at a gun, gun range. And I said, you know, I, I need to know why this, why people feel this way. You know, can you set up a thing? I want to come over there with some friends of mine and shoot some guns for the first time. And they actually set this up. And this is a one or two or three, um, like, isolated events. I'm hearing this over and over and over again. F- friends and acquaintances of mine who are politically to the left are taken up shooting because they're being told they shouldn't and can't by Big Daddy. Now, that being said, the big banks have a huge effect on small business owners as well. When you talk about the banks and the government working hand in hand, well, what was ADA and what was PCI compliance and what was the chip compliance? Or the, I think believe it's EVM or EMV. EMV. Um, what are all those things? You can't run a business in America and take credit cards unless – you're chip compliant and and uh, PCI compliant, and, and the and, banks the banks are re- dictating that, not the government. The banks are well, the banks they're they're the they the same people that own the banks are the same people that are in government. They're going back right. and forth. So, uh, uh, a few years ago, they passed credit card reform. You know what the credit now? I know you know the credit card reform was. Let us remove the liability from the banks and put all the onus on the business owners to assure that fraud doesn't take place. Right. That was credit card reform, folks. That's not a free market at play. That's not a free no, market and that in was, action. And that was PCI compliance. And if you're not PCI compliant, you, you get charged for it. And if you're not chip compliant, you get charged for it and you get all of the fraud comes back to you. Now, in addition to that, now you have a 
a few years prior to that, you had ADA compliance. If your equipment, let's say you had an ATM machine in your store or in your hotel or wherever you have the ATM, and it wasn't ADA compliant, meaning a person in a wheelchair couldn't roll up to it, a blind person couldn't roll use it, um, there were these nice lawyers that would go around the country finding people that ran ATMs that weren't by the new standards, and they would sue them on behalf of all of the impaired people in America. And they were knocking out lawsuits one after the other and making $20,000 here, $50,000 there. They made their livelihood on suing people who were not compliant. So, okay, the business, the businesses, the banks work with the government and the government works with the banks. It's, and it's not just in banking and firearms. It's in everything. This right. is not a free market system. This is a, this is a mercantile hybrid that resembles more of a fascist economy than it does a free market economy. And, and that's why what these businesses are doing is, is, is so insidious. This is, folks, don't kid yourselves. This is the government working to try to prevent you from getting access to tools of self-defense as easily as you can now. And even at that, it's not as e not nearly as easy as it should be. And you can't, you can't acquire nearly the amount of, uh, well, the, the, the variety that you should be able to acquire. You're, you're severely limited already. And this is the government in action. The, 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 these, the, Wells Fargo and the government are one. Citibank and the government are one. Bank of America and the government are one. So when they're moving to hurt businesses that just want to enable you or to give you the options to acquire tools of self-defense, this is gun control. This is what's happening. And it's much easier for them to do it this way than to pass legislation. And at some point, I am not, I'm, I'm not suggesting at all this is I'm, this is a prediction. At some point, you're going to see these businesses targeted for violence. I I have little doubt. I mean, a woman just went crazy on YouTube. Well, she's fortunately not a very good shot. Uh, but but she went crazy over YouTube just because YouTube was was messing up her 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 channel and affecting the amount of money she could make off her channel and how many people could see her videos. What's going to happen when people start to make the connection, and I think they already are, that these corporations are acting on behalf of the government, and this is a soft gun control move. But it's not very soft because it, it has the effect of businesses going out of business, Well, and that's by design. And I mean, and you look at businesses, these big banks who are in cahoots with the government, and then you have to look at the media that's in cahoots with the government. They have an agenda. It's pure propaganda. It, you know, I mean, look at every war we've been in since in the 20th century. What got us into those wars? Changing the opinions of the people. How did we change the opinions of the people? Through the media. The media reported certain stories and advanced an agenda. Whose agenda was that? It was the government's agenda. I mean, it was the government that wanted to go into these wars. Uh, what was it? Bay of Tonkin? Uh, Saddam and the incubators? Um, can you help me out here? Get some more. I mean, uh, remember the main. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remember the main. Also a lie. Yeah. There's just all of the wars we've gotten into except maybe for World War II, um, was all BS. Every right. single one of them. I mean, right. Saudis, not Iraqis, Saudis flew planes into the towers, and we bombed. Not Afghanis, Saudi not even not, Talibanis. And we didn't bomb Saudi Arabia, who created these monsters. We bombed Iraq and Afghanistan. Why? More lies. Because weapons of mass destruction. Th this is the propaganda machine that is wor at work against the American people. It is part of the banking system. It is part of all of these institutions that want to limit your ability to arm yourself. Plain and simple. Yeah. 
Now I want to I'm going to shift gears here to a, a last little segment here, and we don't have much time left. But oh, may I just make this conclusion? Draw a conclusion? Yeah, I, I thought you were done. I'm sorry. I was, but something just occurred to me. In most of Europe, the citizens today fear their governments more than their governments fear the citizens. In America, the government still fears the people a little bit more than the people fear the government. Just a little bit more. Enough more. And that is critical. And even though the Second Amendment was completely gutted at the beginning of the 20th century, and what you have is a vestige of what the Second Amendment really allows for, having your guns is a good thing. Yes. Now, what I want to, I, I just want to briefly uh, touch on a, a topic about guns. Every time I try to talk about this, now it, with with Facebook, I I I use Facebook in a lot of ways to try to get conversations going, uh, get people to think about something, or help people, uh, or let get people to help me think about something. So the, the, the types of posts that you'll actually get engagement on, they're not, they're not detailed explanation type posts. You have to, you know, do, make, make, make a, a uh, let's just say a vague suggestion uh, and <laughs> get people's attention with a vague suggestion. And then they come in and for the most part, people are pretty good. They ask questions and you have good conversations and then, you you get some people who, well, uh, they they see they see all the stuff that you didn't say, and they assume the worst about what you didn't say, and then they attack you for the things that you didn't say. So I've been trying to have this Facebook conversation with people, and to some degree, I've had it successfully with some, with others, uh, people who obviously don't take the time to if they see a post and they can't quite figure it out they haven't taken the time to maybe look at the person's facebook page to learn something about them before you make a lot of assumptions and if you did what you'd see is that i'm 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 a pretty radical extremist when it comes to gun rights i i'm i don't favor any gun legislation i don't favor any restrictions whatsoever but with that being said my worry is there are so many things that, that so many people can be doing to advance, I'll say advance the cause of liberty, just for, I don't want to, that's a, that's a loaded term in and of itself, but to advance the cause of liberty. There's so many things that we can be doing, we who choose to build our own liberty, help others to do the same. And guns is just a small part of it. And, 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 and it's not even just guns that you can use to raise the cost of coercion. There's a lot of things out there that you can use to raise the cost of coercion. So, so many people are so wrapped up in the guns, which, hey, we do full auto. Every week we talk about guns. That's not going to change. That's what the show's about. But I do other stuff. I do a lot of things. I don't just talk about guns. I'm not just obsessed with guns. If you are, I'm not. I'm not judging you. That's fine. But, but there are so many other things going on out there in the world today for us to talk about, for us to experiment with, for us to to help one another uh, uh, do uh, to to make it more difficult for the coercive enterprise to do things to people who have done nothing, who have not directly threatened others or not directly harm others, and and. Even if they pass all the gun restrictions in the world, that doesn't mean all of a sudden that, they, that they've won, all the guns are going to disappear, or all the other means of resisting tyranny will disappear. And one of the most effective means of resisting tyranny is putting yourself and your network of friends in a position where you can afford to say no. Like, like in this case, you have so many businesses that it's not their fault. <coughs> So many businesses that are in this position where they're inexorably tied right now to these uh, to these finance institutions. They need them. They need them to write their you know they need their 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 credit lines so they can order 
what they need to order and they need to process their credit cards and all this. But when these companies do stuff like this, it's going to encourage the creation of more and more off the grid solutions as people begin to work to figure out a way to work around what these idiots are doing. And I'll just I'll just leave this with this and then if you want to close out, go ahead. But uh, you know, the Soviet Union when it collapsed, everybody thought it was dead. And it survived the winter. And the reason it survived the winter is because nobody realized the, the extent to which the black market existed. And it existed in an environment where you could be killed if, you found, if they found out you were, you were buying and selling in the black market. So if you, if you uh, Bank of America folks, if you think that shutting down the legitimate, legitimate, I'll put that in quotes, legitimate gun businesses is going to stop the buying and selling of tools of self-defense. Yeah, you're only you're only going to hasten your demise with these moves. Go ahead. In some ways, it seems to me that these are distractions. We keep hearing in the media, "Hey, we're coming after your guns because these kids got killed over here. Hey, we're coming after your guns because, you know, this crazy man was sitting in a tower and he shot a bunch of people in a concert. Well, that was a hotel actually, but, um, Hey, all of these horrible things are happening because of guns and we're coming after your guns. And when you're leave, living in fear that you're going to lose your rights and there is a movement, to really go after the second amendment because oh, there is there's there's a legitimate effort yeah because the second amendment is the first domino if they can knock out the the second amendment hey there are other amendments that they would really and other parts of the constitution in general that they would really like to gut as well to advance their internationalist agenda um but these are all distractions to scare people to keep them off balance they have the left scared of Trump. They need something for the right to be scared of. And that's gun grabbing. We're coming for your guns, boys. Right, right. Now, and, and which which they'd like to. It's not like it's like without question. invented out of thin air. But you have to ask yourself, what is this a distraction of or from? What What are they trying to keep my gaze off of? And I would say the real reason why Syria is being fought. I mean, it ain't for the people of Syria. If that was the case, we wouldn't started this half a million people dead. Or if we more. cared about the half a if million we cared or more, about, yeah, if we cared about the children of Syria, the CIA, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Israel wouldn't have gotten involved in Syria. Cause that's where it started. Um, and it's all about oil and pipelines. So, oil pipelines and, uh, also clearing out the land to relocate certain individuals. Well, yeah, that's a theory I've had for quite some time. Yeah, and I'm, I'm convinced. I'm, I'm convinced more and more that that's eventually you're going to start if they're successful. Now, Russia's throwing a real monkey wrench into it, but if if they are successful, I'm not saying whether they will or not will not be. You're going to start seeing them talking about. Listen, man, there's a solution for this whole Israel Palestine thing. We'll just give Palestinians this chunk of land in Syria. That's coming. That's coming. Yeah, hey, it's close to Palestine. Right. And they could be connected to Palestine. They could be, right. you know, they could visit Palestine. And they, but, you know, it solves the problem between the Palestinians and the Israelis. And then Saudi Arabia says, oh, we have a problem. We have a solution. We could be good friends with Israel now because we're terrified of Right. Fucking and, Iran. Yes. Iran is going to kill us they, all. They'd rather be allies with Israel Sorry. than have to face Iran without that aid. And Israel sees in Saudi Arabia useful allies. Well, there's Israel, Saudi Arabia, Egypt. They're kind of coming together. I want to apologize for my Middle Eastern accent. It actually became kind of like Indian subcontinent. <laughs> Yeah, when so, I do accents, I end up floating around the world. That was I never, horrible. I never can stick on one accent, so, you know. Yeah, the the solution for the Palestinian Israeli thing is to give part of Syria to the Palestinians. And the fact that the Israelis have um annexed the Golan Heights how many times now? 
uh, but they're not getting any international recognition for as annexing it and actually making it part of Israel. The, Israel has a big problem because no one recognizes the Golan Heights as being part of Israel, even though Israel said it's part of Israel. Right. Um, because of all the oil that's been found in the Golan Heights. Right. And um, that's a serious issue for that part of the world because if Syria doesn't exist, then no one can contest the ownership of the Golan Heights against Israel. So all of these things are distractions because there's some big boys in America and Europe that want things to proceed internationally the way they want it to proceed. And if you're sitting there filling your basement full of jarred goods and, and, uh, and spending on your mon- tens of thousands of dollars on ammo in preparation for whatever you think is coming, your eyes are off of the real situation. Yeah, well, to me, the real situation is uh, there's, there's very little you can do to stop what's going on internationally. No, you're not going to do anything to stop it. The real situation is what are you doing to uh, – and, and some of us, for various reasons, are, are more entangled than others. So for some of us, it's harder than it is for others. But what are you doing to try to disentangle yourself from – the system what is yes and on that note we're gonna have to wrap up here what uh, i'm just getting started yeah yeah we're gonna have to wrap up i got work to do dude i still got i i still got i got i got prep content for tomorrow man i stake.tv that that stuff does doesn't create itself and by the way if you want to see like the drudge version of i state which also includes a whole so i go through about mm, three thousand links a day and I can only get to so many to cover on iStake.tv at various levels. So, But there's plenty of stuff that I'm like, oh, I wish I could cover that. So what I did was on Wirewatch, if you go to Wirewatch.news, on the, on the, the left-hand column all the way down, that's, that's all iStake.tv stuff. But the rest of the site is actually curated news links from a whole bunch of different sources on topics from uh, artificial intelligence to the blockchain to uh, uh, gun news to uh, weird news, there's a number of topics, but it's it's tailored primarily for those who have a a self reliance type mentality, and and it's not filled with fear porn, although it it does have some fear porn stuff there because yeah, pay attention to it. You know, keep one eye on that. Just don't keep all your eyes on that. Just don't keep everything focused on the fear porn because there's plenty of other stuff out there that I, I don't know where you're at in your lives, what your expertise is, but I I think you're probably bound to see some stuff there like, oh, well, I'm already in that. Oh, that's an opportunity. There was something I saw recently, which I want to uh, check into. Go Tenna, turn your cell phone into a, a mesh network uh uh, walkie-talkie uh, with other people who have this uh, this GoTenna thing. So your network, you guys can start buying these GoTennas so that in in you know SHTF situation, and, it, and the SHTF is like even if just the power goes out, it's like a Hurricane Sandy, your phones are still going to work to talk to each other because it's a mesh network. So there's things like and, that, all kinds of stuff out there. Well, and there's and there's low tech stuff too. Hey. Right. Make yourself valuable to your community. Go and take a class in first aid. Go and volunteer time with the with the EMS. Go and help out with the fire department. Learn things. Come, make friends. Uh, expand your horizons. Learning is the best part of all of this, in my knowledge mind. Knowledge is power. <laughs> well, that was lame. Um, knowledge is power let's wrap this up i gotta go oh I gotta, dear god i got stuff to do oh i just saw your beer belly it's not oh really a god. beer belly it's well, more I'm... like a wine cooler belly yeah i think the gotta, nsa you got a wine planted a cramp in the back of my leg oh right. dear right at a strategic I just have to walk it at a strategic moment well this is a good time to end i want to thank everybody for joining us here on uh on uh, <laughs> Is Daily's Full Auto. We will be back next week 
on uh, the same back time, same back channel. Who knows? Maybe we'll have uh, uh, somebody on us. I, there's a there's a few people that I know. There's Alex Pesterfield. There's uh, there's a number of folks that I know that are, are pretty well seasoned in guns. And maybe I'll start inviting some of these folks on, to, even if you're on for just a segment or two, just to chat I for a while. I want to ask Andrew a question. Well, and ask you, you said earlier, Tumblr versus Penetrator, Tumblr wins. Have you ever considered alternating? And then adding hollow points into that alternation. Are you yeah. still with us? I don't know. I think he fell asleep. No, I don't. Yeah. I have no idea. So, so uh, I will be back tomorrow afternoon, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for headlines you may have missed. I'm already working on the news that I'm going to cover tomorrow. And uh, also tomorrow night. Right here on the on both of these channels, I think I'll do this same type of simulcast on my Facebook page and on the Liberty Principal Facebook page. We're going to have uh, Bodhi Agora and I on Lozilla Mystery Theater. We're going to have Donnie Gebert on, and he's going to talk to us. He, we, we've talked to him before in the past. We're going to talk to him again about his idea for a direct republic that uses the blockchain. Now, you don't vote. You pay. So whatever you pay for, that's what the repu that's the type of services that this quote republic has. And we're gonna to talk to him in more detail about that and some of his ideas. And with that note, do you have anything more to say before we shut this uh you know, shut this lemon stand down? That means Paul is better than me. I agree. With God's blessings go. Wow, I totally <laughs> I did that. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Night. And now I leave you all.